Welcome to Fertivity. I'm Monica Healy and today we're taking an in-depth look at endometriosis and how it can affect fertility. So what is endometriosis? One of the most common health issues experienced among women and one of the leading causes of infertility is endometriosis and it occurs when tissue from the endometrial lining implants itself outside the womb. Each month during the menstrual cycle this tissue sheds just as the lining of the uterus would. However, there's no system in place for this tissue to then exit the body. Scar tissue and adhesions occur, leading to increased levels of pain and often also to infertility due to scarring. What are the symptoms of endometriosis? Symptoms of endometriosis can include, but not limited to the following. Painful periods called dysmenorrhea, painful intercourse, chronic low back pain and abdominal pain, painful digestion, increased pain during bowel movements and urination, excessive bleeding, spotting or bleeding between cycles, infertility, joint pain, fatigue, nerve pain, bloating, and nausea. What causes endometriosis? It is estimated that as many as 176 million women worldwide suffer from endometriosis. While the exact cause of endometriosis is unknown, there does appear to be a strong genetic link within families. It is also recognized that endometriosis is not contagious or sexually transmitted. Theories pertaining to other potential causes include tissue from the endometrial lining traveling outside the uterus and attaching to other areas of the body as a result of blocked menstrual flow. There is some debate over whether tampons can lead to an increased risk of endometriosis by blocking menstrual flow and leading to a backup within the body. A compromised immune system um, failing to seek out and destroy rogue endometrial tissue growths Another cause may be an overabundance of estrogen, on which endometriosis appears to thrive. Displacement of endometrial tissue during surgeries meant to treat other issues. Endometrial tissue implants, which may be present outside the uterus at birth. And also exposure to dioxin and other man-made chemicals. How is endometriosis diagnosed? There are a variety of reasons behind the excessive length of time endometriosis often takes to diagnose. The level of understanding surrounding this disease is still extremely limited. It is not a disease doctors can see from the outside and is often mistaken for other diseases related to pelvic pain such as pelvic inflammatory disease, ovarian cysts, or irritable bowel syndrome. The only reliable method of diagnosis is laparoscopic surgery. Ultrasounds and diagnostic testing often provide no answers, so doctors are left to wait and see and weigh patients' complaints against the risks of surgery. The variability in the presentation of endometriosis also leads to issues with diagnosis. Some women begin experiencing issues with their first period, while others may not have any problems until much later in life. In many women, the progression is slow, with pain increasing over the course of several years. In others, there is an advanced rate of growth over a short period of time. Even the severity of symptoms is not always a good indicator of the level of disease. Some women with aggressive spreading experience few issues while others with only minimal growth may face daily pain. There is limited understanding as to why this variability occurs making it very difficult to spot endometriosis merely by recognizing the symptoms. How does laparoscopic surgery work? Once the need for laparoscopic surgery is determined the patient is given a general anesthetic. During the surgery, a patient's abdomen is expanded with the use of gas. Small cuts are made in the abdomen to insert tools which allow doctors to seek out and remove any possible areas of endometrial growth. 
Often these lesions are then sent to a lab to confirm the diagnosis of endometriosis. Surgeries can take anywhere from one to 10 hours, depending on the skill level of the surgeon and the spreading of the disease observed. Recovery typically involves bed rest and pain medications for several days, often requiring overnight stays in the hospital for observation. I want to discuss the stages of endometriosis. The stages of endometriosis are typically diagnosed as stage one through stage four. Stage one is considered minimal. Implants remain confined to the pelvic region with minimal spreading. Stage two is considered mild. Increased implants are observed as well as scarring and adhesions surrounding the reproductive organs. Stage three is moderate. Implants begin to cover the ovaries, fallopian tubes, and occasionally also the rectum and the cervix. Stage four is considered severe. Excessive endometrial implants occur in the reproductive area, extending out beyond the pelvic region into other areas of the abdominal cavity as well. Traditional treatments. Treating endometriosis is often an experimental endeavor with doctors and patients having to cycle through several treatment choices before finding something that works. Traditional options include pain medication, often prescribed to treat the increasing levels of pain. It is important to note that pain medications will not treat the actual disease though. Patients are given hormone treatments. Endometriosis is often associated with elevated levels of estrogen, therefore making hormone treatments a common path doctors pursue. Keep in mind that women hoping to conceive will not be able to achieve pregnancy while on these treatments. Birth control pills are used to regulate hormones and to decrease the menstrual flow. Lupron, which originally developed for advanced prostate cancer patients, Lupron has become one of the more commonly used drugs in the treatment of endometriosis. Lupron shuts down the pituitary gland and effectively puts women in a state of medically induced menopause. This is thought to decrease continued growth of endometriosis and reduce pain levels. However, it should be noted that Lupron is associated with several potential and often severe side effects and can only be taken for short periods of time. Recent controversy has surrounded the potential long-term side effects of this drug and several endometriosis experts are beginning to kind of veer away from its use. Progestin is another uh, hormone thought to shrink endometriosis by counteracting the effects of estrogen on the tissue. Women will cease having menstrual period while on this drug and side effects can include weight gain, depression, and decreased bone density. Danazol is progesterone. Danazol reduces the number of cycles a woman experiences but is also associated with several undesirable side effects. In addition, Danazol does not prevent pregnancy and can cause harm to a growing fetus and it cannot be used in conjunction with other hormones which may prevent pregnancy. Let's talk about surgical options. Laparoscopic surgery is the most common procedure utilized by doctors to remove endometriosis. Legions are burned away during the course of, a, of this procedure with doctors typically opting to open a patient up only when there are also large cysts witnessed in conjunction with endometrial lesions. These cysts can be made up of endometrial tissue and blood, otherwise known as endometriomas. Excision surgery is another option. Several experts in the field are beginning to tout the benefits of excision surgery. Rather than burning away endometrial tissue, the goal of excision surgery is to remove the endometrial implants by their roots. Few specialists are trained in this procedure and those who are focus on removing every ounce of endometriosis from a patient to prevent reoccurrence. Hysterectomy is a controversial treatment for endometriosis. A hysterectomy 
invokes removing all the reproductive organs. Once a hysterectomy occurs, a woman is unable to become pregnant. While this treatment brings relief for some women, there has been an increase in recent cases of endometriosis recurring even after hysterectomy. Patients should consider all alternative treatments carefully and possibly seek out second opinions before agreeing to this, this option. I want to mention natural treatments. In addition to the traditional treatments available, there are several natural options which some patients may find relief through. Pycnegonol is one. Derived from pine bark extract, this supplement has shown promise in the treatment of endometriosis during studies in Japan. Patients were assigned to either pygnigonol or Lupron in different test groups. Over the course of the study, pygnigonol showed a reduction of endometriosis symptoms from severe to moderate without the side effects associated with Lupron. Additionally, women in the pygnigonol group were able to achieve pregnancy during treatment. Diet is another option. The endometriosis diet consists of eliminating several food groups believed to increase inflammation. Caffeine, gluten, and dairy are seen to be among those that are the greatest culprits. Acupuncture is another option. The use of acupuncture for hormone regulation and symptom relief is beneficial to some women. Myofacial release. Myofacial release therapy is the manipulation of soft tissue to achieve similar, similar results as acupuncture. Treatment conclusion. I want to tell you about a patient that had suffered from endometriosis and had to cycle through a variety of treatments before finally finding relief. She underwent five surgeries over the course of three years, experienced no improvement in symptoms while on birth control, and endured six months of Lupron treatment during which she was one of the rare cases to have continued endometrial growth in addition to the many difficult side effects brought on by Lupron. She gained 30 pounds, was exhausted all the time, continued to experience excessive levels of pain and was now also facing daily bouts of nausea and hair loss. At this point, her doctor told her that her only remaining option was hysterectomy or referral to a pain clinic. The doctor no longer felt she could help her in any way. Not believing either option was the best choice for her, she sought a second opinion, sending her records to two of the top endometriosis specialists in the country. One of them reached out to her, explaining he believed he could help. She underwent excision surgery for the first time in February of 2011. Under his recommendation, she also began taking pycnigonol, and seeing a nutritionist to help her implement the endometriosis diet. Throughout the course of that journey, she learned that the foods which cause inflammatory reactions can be unique to each individual, making allergy testing beneficial when hoping to eliminate potential causes. She also turned to acupuncture and myofacial release, seeing noticeable improvements in her pain levels as a direct result. By implementing natural treatments in conjunction with excision surgery made all the difference. Today she feels as though she has her life back. The problem with endometriosis is there is no one-size-fits-all treatment plan. Finding a method that works for you often means first building a reliable team of practitioners around you. It is common for treatment to include a sampling of several methods often seeking the combination which works best for the treatment of the individual. Education is key and finding the strength to become your own advocate is the necessary component to improving quality of life with endometriosis. I hope you found this video helpful. For more helpful videos and information about fertility and how to conceive, subscribe today. Thanks for watching. I'm Monica Healy.